The Department of Health recently warned the public against summer diseases as the temperature starts to rise. Joining us in the studio this morning is Health Assistant Secretary Pauline Jean Ubial. Good morning, Asik Ubial. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Ameline, and good morning to the viewers of Solar TV. So anytime now, summer season is officially going to be with us. So what mm -hmm. are these summer diseases we should be looking out for? Yes, uh, usually we have uh, viral infections like mm -hmm. conjunctivitis, the mm -hmm. common cough and colds, because uh, viruses usually proliferate during humid and warm weather. Conjunctivitis, ano, what? what? Oh, sore eyes. Sore, sore eyes. eyes. Mm -hmm. yes. So mga eye diseases. Yes, eye diseases and cough and colds. Mm -hmm. And then we have, of course, the skin diseases because um, fungal infections and other skin diseases also proliferate during uh, warm weather. And we have the common chicken pox um, and measles is also a season for outbreaks during the warm weather. Then the usual food poisoning because um, food uh, easily spoils during this time. Mm -hmm. And well, other diseases uh, involve um, hygiene, mm -hmm. personal hygiene, like we have scabies that uh, proliferate during this time. Mm, if, if, are, if, if, you're, if you're not very careful yes. with your personal hygiene, mm. you may develop scabies. There are parasites actually that are transferred from person to person. And usually this happens during the, the warm mm -hmm. uh, season. So far, ma'am, has these incidents increased every year, mm -hmm. considering these are what is referred to as summer diseases? Has it been increasing every year or it's usually the same number of cases? Um, we, we record increase in number of cases, like for example, food poisoning, mm -hmm. depending on uh, reports of outbreaks. So it sometimes increase because of the outbreaks. But generally, mm -hmm. they, they have remained the same during this period. Mm -hmm. How do we prevent these? Mm -hmm. So the best way to prevent actually is to main, maintain personal hygiene, like washing your hands um, more often, like 20 times a day. And yeah, especially for sore eyes. That's the When you have sore eyes, you should, be, you should be washing your hands more yes, often than more usual. Often. And the person who has sore eyes uh, should uh, stop uh, touching their eyes so mm -hmm. that they cannot spread the disease. And then there's also maintaining proper diet so mm -hmm. that you can, you, your immune system can fight off some of the viral infections like cough and colds. Then we also have, of course, uh, taking a bath mm -hmm. and uh, washing with soap and water to prevent skin diseases. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, food food uh, born food borne diseases yes. or food poisoning illnesses occur especially during the summer season. Mm -hmm. What programs or projects does the DOH have to inform the public about how to minimize the possible effects of food poisoning or to at least minimize it altogether with proper food handling? Yes, usually we have seminars and trainings of food handlers. So that is done at the local level with our sanitary inspectors and the nurses at the rural health unit. So we tell them that usually you have to prepare food mm -hmm. at least uh, two to three hours before you serve. Um, so you don't keep it open for a long period of time. So if you need to serve it for longer, you have to put it inside the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So only two to three hours uh, before you consume it, that mm -hmm. you leave it in open, mm -hmm. open or room temperature. So apart from this awareness campaign that the DOH has now, I understand that the DOH has a self-imposed deadline for mm -hmm. the submission or the completion of the IIR or the implementing rules and regulations for the RH law. That's yes. going to be on March 15, but as early as now, your technical working group is already on its way to to consult with its stakeholders. Yes, actually, since January, mm -hmm. we have been uh, meeting the technical working group because the law was passed in December 21. And we've discussed the points that has to be included in the IRR. So right now, 
the IRR is more or less complete in its final draft and we're now subjecting it to a series of public forum. So there will be one tomorrow in Davao, that's the Ritz Hotel, and then there's one in Cebu at the Crown Plaza mm -hmm. Hotel, and then the final one will be here in Metro Manila at the Century Park Hotel. Who can attend these public consultations? Actually, it's uh, limited to those that we have invited, but well, people can actually ask themselves to be invited, especially by our Centers for Health Development, that's our regional offices, because um, as you know, we have uh, limited slots mm -hmm. for, for the audience, so they can actually present themselves at the regional office if they really want to mm -hmm. attend in this forum. Mm -hmm. I remember before, sometime in mid-2000, when the DOH had programs in order to inform the public about reproductive health, mm -hmm. it wasn't as easy mm -hmm. because there was, there, was a, there was a hesitation from some groups. But now, what is it like? Is it easier now or are there still those who have yet to be aware? What's the initial public reaction or public awareness for the RH bill, for yes. the RH law? Uh, I think since the passage of the law and the big debates uh, last year on the RH bill, there has been a lot of awareness already. And for some sectors, there has been acceptance that this is a bill or a law whose time has come. Mm -hmm. That's their terminology. And we often say that, well, this is more of an education rather than an implementation law because the implementation has actually been going on for the past 30 or 40 years. We have Im been implementing family planning and reproductive health in our health facilities. Mm -hmm. And this law just provides for education of um, our children mm -hmm. in elementary and high school and also the term that we have to comply with informed choice. Mm -hmm. You have to educate the clients before you provide the services. Okay, so it seems like you'll have a busy summer. Yes, <laughs> very busy. So thank you so much for joining us this morning, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, we've spoken with Assistant Secretary Pauline Obial of the Department of Health.